Hi everyone, my name is Debbie. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. If you're new here, I'm a reseller. I've been reselling for 17 years and five months. I sell mainly on eBay and Poshmark and then a little bit on Macari and I just started on Facebook Marketplace not that long ago also. Today I am completing the series that I started where I'm showing everything in my listing process all the way from sourcing to research, pricing, cleaning, photographing, listing. Now today I am going to complete this series by talking a little bit about my inventory system and actually shipping the items. So after you have everything finished, you have the items listed, sometimes it can be tempting to just stick the items over in a corner and deal with them later. But if you do that, sometimes things will get moved around or piled up or you'll end up putting it somewhere that you don't remember. And if that happens, it's a disaster when you sell it and it's time to find it and ship it. And I can just say, I know that because when I started reselling, everything happened really quickly. I didn't have an inventory system. And at first I just had things piled up. And before long, when you have a couple hundred items, you can start losing items or it's difficult to find items. So it's so important that you start at the very beginning with an inventory system. And I'm going to go briefly over it. I have a video where I go completely in depth on my inventory system. So if you would like to watch that, that is a lot more detailed, but basically I use a bucket system. So I have everything stored in these plastic containers and these containers last a long time. When I purchased them over 17 years ago, they were $5 at Walmart, $5 at Dollar General. Well, I was in Dollar General the other day looking to see how much they cost and they were like $17. So they've definitely gone up in price. I thought the Dollar General prices were just crazy. So I searched online and at Walmart, they have them for a great price, just $6 and 48 cents. And about half of my containers are this exact brand and they have lasted a really long time. Or you can have them delivered to your door from Amazon and they have eight of them for $68.30, which makes them just $8.54 each. And it is a little bit of an investment, but if you just, as you make sales, start investing in them, then they will last a really long time. And how I store my items is I prepackage them in these plastic bags. And I really like these. I purchased from Uline for the longest time, but they were not self-sealing. And so I had to use tape to seal them. And then when I would open them up, the bag would rip. And these are my favorite by far. I purchased them on Amazon and I'll link them below. And the thing that I love about them is I don't have to tape them. They are self-sealing and you can open them up if you have to. I try not to, but even if I even if I put everything in the listing, sometimes people ask questions and then you can close it back up again and open it back up. And that is a feature that I love. And I, for a while, tried to just put my items in a plastic container and not prepackage them. Things got so wrinkled that I would end up having to steam them again before I sent them out because they just looked awful. And it's easier to find when they are all folded and stacked up. It's just really easy to find them. When they're just thrown in a bucket, it's really difficult to actually find the items. So I think it's very helpful. I have had several people tell me that they use like Ziploc bags and reuse them. And I think that's excellent. And what I would do in that case is I would use like maybe craft paper. So if I'm going to use a poly mailer or something like this Tyvex envelope, it will be weatherproof. So I could store it in reusable bags take it out of the bag, wrap it in craft paper to give it a little bit of extra protection and look nice, and then put it in the weatherproof bag. But as of right now, this is my system that I'm using. When I list, I showed in the drafting process, there is the SKU line on both eBay and Poshmark, and I put in there some information. I put the date that I list it, I put the bucket number, the cost of goods, and where I purchased it at. So then when the item sells, that SKU, whether I had it on eBay or Poshmark, will show up. 
I sold this Parker of Vienna men's vintage sweater on Poshmark. When the item sold, I went to my sold listings to see what I needed to ship and underneath it displays the SKU information that I put in when listing the item. So I see that I need to go to bucket 163 to pull this item to ship. It also gives me the other information that I put in, such as where I purchased it, the date I listed it, and the amount that I paid for it. So it's really handy just to have all that information right there when the item sells. I sold the Pottery Barn Kids Very Hungry Caterpillar sheet on eBay. Man, this wasn't the quilt. The quilt was the one that I thought was going to sell for a lot of money. I only planned on selling this one for around $15, so it sold really well. When I sold the sheet, I was able to just look at the custom label that is displayed underneath and see that I need to go pull this sheet from bucket 170. Say so it said 170, I will go to bucket 170 and I will pull my item and it's ready to go. It's already packaged, which makes it really nice. One thing that I started doing in just the last seven or eight months, which has been so helpful, is on the bucket, I also write the date that I listed this bucket. And I go into this more in my inventory system video. That way, say I am listing and I'm typing really fast and instead of putting bucket 170, I accidentally put bucket 107. I go to bucket 107, it's not there. It's been five months since I've listed it. I don't remember where it's at. I can then look for the date and I can and I can see on my SKU number, well, I listed that on November 12th, 2021. And I'll know the 107 was not on that date. I will then go to the date on the bucket and be able to find it. Also, I keep a little notebook every day when I'm listing and I have the date and I have the bucket number that I put everything in. So that's another backup is I can go look in my notebook. So I have a couple backup plans because losing an item, not being able to find it and searching through a thousand items for an hour or two is horrible. And once you do that a couple times, you will figure out how important that inventory system is. And I still, when I had the system with just the bucket number, I still would occasionally lose items. So having that backup with the date on it and putting the date in my SKU and in my notebook, it makes it so much less stressful on not having lost items. Now on Macari and Facebook Marketplace, I don't even put that in because I have to go to eBay or Poshmark to end those also. So usually eBay is the easiest one for finding my SKU number. And so usually I'll just pull it when I, when I end my listing on eBay, I will just write down the bucket that it was on then. So that is my inventory system in a nutshell. And if you'd like to go back and watch the full video with a lot more detail, then I will pop it up above. Sometimes depending on where you're watching the video, it'll pop up a link or not. So if not, you can go to my playlist and it's under the educational and reselling videos. Okay. Okay, so now you've sold some items and you're ready to ship them out. So what I do every morning is I go through and I see what I have sold. I look at all my SKUs and I make a little list on a sheet of paper showing me what bucket number and what item, a very brief description, usually just the title of everything that I need to pull. After I have the items pulled, then I go and print my shipping label. I just use a regular Canon printer I paid like $80 for this printer about five or six years ago. I buy ink once a year for about $17, and so it is doing just fine for me. Next, I print the postage for anything that is going out that day. In a couple minutes after I finish the overview, we will ship items from each platform, and I will show you how I print the postage and how I package a variety of items. you want to package your items and you want to be sure and have packaging on hand. You can order free priority supplies from USPS.com. And I have another video all about different shipping supplies and how to order them online from USPS. I just ordered supplies and usually this time of year is really slow, but I was surprised they arrived in a week. So you do have to plan ahead, but it's so nice to have them delivered to your home. On my eBay shipping 101 video, that, that's useful for Poshmark also because I use the priority supplies for Poshmark 
Uh, if you're shipping on Poshmark, you can use any of the supplies that say priority. It doesn't matter if they say flat rate or regional, any of them that say USPS priority can be used on Poshmark. This is one of my favorites because it holds quite a bit. This is the Tyvex envelope. I always keep these on hand, DuPont Tyvex. So these are great. It is a men's Southern tie polo shirt. It fits in there, plenty of space. Jeans will fit in there. Here, a couple items will fit in here. Here's the Victoria's Secret pajamas. I could fit a shirt and the pajamas both fit in here just fine. So these, these are great. I use these as much as I can. For shoes, I love this Priority Shoe Box. It's called The Shoe Box and it doesn't fit like large boots, but just standard shoes. They fit so nicely in here. And the reason why I love this box so much is it provides protection, but it is very lightweight. I think it's like five ounces where a regular box to hold a shoe might be a lot more than that. So often shoes are like one pound, eight ounces. And to put it in a big sturdy cardboard box, it we might put it over the two pound limit, which really increases price. But this one is so lightweight that it usually doesn't put it to the next level, yet it still gives it protection. So this one, I always keep on hand. Another one, I'm not going to go over all of them since I have quite a few of them in my other video. I don't want to say the same thing over and over again, but I'm just showing you like my, my favorite, most important crucial, like if I was getting started, the ones that I would definitely want. This is the medium flat rate box and it can hold like sometimes if I have like big sweaters or even some lighter weight jackets or things like that, things that won't fit in a Tyvex envelope they will fit in here pretty nicely. So you can see that's the size. So I really like this one. So I might, if I was placing an order, I might start with those. And I use those on both eBay and Poshmark. And then depending on the shipping service for Macari and Facebook. Then the next thing I like to keep stickers. I learned with Poshmark how important packaging is. And so I started purchasing pick stickers. This one says, I hope this package brightens your day. And then like pretty little stickers. It says, thank you for supporting my small business. And others just say thank you. And so I started, I started using these on the other platforms also, and people appreciate it on every platform. I think if I receive a package in the mail and it's nice and it's neat and it looks cute, I love that. And I, so I have started doing that on all of the packages. So now I'm going to go through and show you a little bit of the actual shipping of a few items. I'm Next, we are going to ship actual items that I sold from this series. I will show packaging and shipping for items from Poshmark, eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and Macari. Let's start by shipping an item that I sold on Poshmark. I received an offer for $120 for this Alice and Olivia dress, so I accepted. I then went to my email, and if you see the email that has the attachment, that is the shipping label. So I just open up my email, and it gives a little bit of information about the sale, and then if I scroll down to the very bottom, it will have the shipping label attached. I just click on it, send it to my printer, and it is that easy with Poshmark. When the label prints out, I immediately turn it over and write on the back what the item is that goes with that label so that I do not mix it up. I then package the dress and I wanna make it look extra pretty because they paid a good amount for this dress. So I wrapped it in tissue paper, I put a thank you sticker on it, then I also used a clear plastic bag to give it a little bit more protection. Then I am going to use a box. This is the 1092 box. I had it delivered to my door from USPS and that just gives it a little bit more protection. So now it's weather protected with the plastic, then the box protects the fabric a little bit more also. I seal the box and then I put the shipping label and I put a sticker on the outside also that says, I hope this package makes your day. And then it is ready to go outside for the mailman to pick up. 
Next, let's ship an item that I sold on eBay. I sold the Pottery Barn Kids Very Hungry Caterpillar Sheet. I click on the item, I click on Print Shipping Label, and see they chose Priority Mail. It is going to cost $10.86. I can look at other options to ship. I still have to ship USPS Priority Mail, but I can change the packaging to a flat rate packaging because it's still the same service. So I'm going to choose the padded flat rate envelope because it's going to save me a little bit over $2 and they still have the same service. If you look a little further down, you will see a box that shows additional options. This is where you click if you would like to add signature confirmation. You can add extra insurance if you would like to. You can even have the postage displayed on the value if you want the buyer to see how much you actually paid in postage. There is also an option that I really like that says add custom text on label. Every once in a while, I will have a buyer that has a specific request for where they want the item delivered. They will say something like, will you please tell the mailman to deliver my package at the side door behind the plant? That is where I can put it in and it will actually display on the postage so that the mailman will see when they are delivering the package. I also take a yellow highlighter and highlight the message to make sure that they don't miss it. So that is very helpful. You can also add custom text to the email that goes out to the buyer and say something like, thank you for your purchase <laughs> or something like that if you would like that to go out on the email. Then you either print your postage or you can create a QR code, generate that code, save it on your phone, bring the package in to USPS and they will scan that and you don't even have to have a printer. So that is a second option that you have. Then down below, you can choose for the payment to come out of your pending payouts, or you can have it taken from PayPal. I always choose to have it come out of my pending payouts. Okay, I'm super excited that the Very Hungry Caterpillar sheet sold. So when I pre-packaged it, I folded it so that it could possibly go in a flat rate plat padded or a regular flat rate envelope because it was over one pound. So depending on where it is in the country, it could make two or three dollars difference. And it does. I'm going to put a cute little eBay sticker on there. This is thank you for supporting my small business, eBay. I think it will fit in either one. They paid a good amount. I think I'll put it in the fat right padded envelope. It just right snugly. And now that I'm sure that it does fit in there and not too squished, it looks good. Now I'll go print the postage since I know I can put it in a padded flat rate and save a couple dollars. So now I go up to the top of that screen, click on purchase, and I print my shipping label, put it on my package, and put it outside for the mailman to pick okay. up. Yay for an international sale. These are the Allen Edmonds, the ones that have the inside bottoms are different and they went through the eBay standard international program. All I'm going to do is wrap each of them in tissue paper. eBay sticker on it. Then I'm going to make sure that it's weather protected also. Let's put it Inside one of these. Okay, so that's one. And then and I'll use another sticker. Then I will use this eBay Priority, the shoe box. I love this box. One shoe in, the other shoe in, a little bit more eBay paper in it.
goes to that. And go print the postage. This time I am printing my postage from my computer instead of my phone so you can see a little bit of the differences. I go to my sold items and I click on purchase shipping label. It will then pull up the shipping information and you can see under the blocked information for privacy it says please only 40 characters. They had written out the word apartment so I just changed it to the abbreviation and then I was under the 40 character limit. That happens quite a bit on international shipments. So if that happens, just abbreviate. I have also noticed that many times they will have the city or state in the address line also. So if they have it there in duplicate, you can just remove that so that you are under your 40 characters. Next, it shows the shipping information. When I weighed it, it was just under two pounds, 15 ounces. The dimensions don't even matter because it's under the 12 by 12 by 12. They chose eBay International Standard Delivery for $34. It shows buyer selected, so that is what I am going to use to ship. I'm scrolling through just so you can see some of the other options and prices, but I definitely am going to go with what they selected. Then I just scroll down to the bottom, and on the customs form, it puts in my title from my listing. I make it a little easier for customs, and I just change it to men's shoes because I think that will be easier for them to read. You will see a box that says type of items in package. The default is merchandise. I leave that as is because it is merchandise. Then it asks for comments. For example, good subject to quarantine. I don't even put anything there. Then I agree to the terms and service and I'm not sending any prohibited items. So I click that. Then I go down to the bottom. I'm going to print the postage and it shows we'll charge you after the shipping label is used. So you are not charged up front on the international shipments. I then purchase the postage. It shows $34 and I print it out and put it on my package. Put this postage on. I'll put one of my little stickers. It's ready to go. I thought I would share one where I actually decided to upgrade the postage due to it being the holidays and I wanted to make sure that it arrived on time in case it was a Christmas present. This was the Eddie Bauer sweater and you can see in the custom skew area, I put the container that it's in, I purchased it from Goodwill, how much I paid for it, the date that I listed it, and then there's a little bit of extra information. I have YouTube, best day five, and then I estimated selling it between 25 and 30. That's just for my record keeping in case I do an update video on this series. That way I record it in a special little notebook so that I don't forget. <laughs> so that's just extra. So next I'm going to click on print shipping label. Then it comes up with first class and it says five to 10 days and it's going to cost me $5.53. The package is one pound and it's going to Texas and I am in Oklahoma. And so I am thinking it is not going to cost that much more to upgrade it to priority. And then there's a more of a likelihood that they will get it in time for Christmas if it is a Christmas gift or if they're wanting to wear it for Christmas. So. I check my options and see how much it is going to cost for me to upgrade it. It looks like it will be a little less than $2 to upgrade this package from first class to priority mail. And normally I wouldn't, I would just send it first class, but due to the holidays and I know there is extra slow shipping, I wanna make sure that it gets there. So it is worth $2 to me to upgrade it. Now you never want to downgrade. If they pay for priority, never change it to first class or a different service, but it is okay to change it from USPS first class and upgrade it to USPS priority. If you see at the bottom, it's showing priority is four to 10 days. I have never seen that in over 17 years. The max I had ever seen was three days. So at least USPS is accounting for it taking more time right now. So then I click on purchase to generate my shipping label.
Now, say you printed the postage from your phone and you were trying to print to your wireless printer and it just wouldn't work. Well, you can go to your laptop and go to your sold and shipped items and under actions, just click on reprint and you can easily reprint your label. I've had to do that before where I was trying to print wirelessly and it just wouldn't work and so I had to connect my printer with wires to my laptop and then regenerate the label. So that's no big deal. If you print it from your phone and need to print later from your computer, that is very easy to do. Okay, this I had first class shipping on, but it weighed right at one pound. And with it being the holidays, I'm going to err on the side of caution I'm going to upgrade it to priority. A little bit too squishy if I put it in this bag. I'm going to wrap it in this cute eBay tissue paper and match the colors with the cardigan. And that's one of the benefits of having this, the eBay store. You, you get a coupon for free shipping supplies and it, just about makes the store pay for itself. And the sweater has green and blue, so I'm putting green and blue tissue paper. And then I'm going to put it in a poly bag to make sure it has weather protection. Let's take this. I'm not going to use my eBay tape because that might be a little bit too much eBay. I don't want to go completely overboard. So now doesn't that look cute? I like that. And then I could use, I've got big eBay mailers. I just absolutely love these. So I'm going to use, I'm going to use this to make it really cute. And now it's weather protected also. I'll just slip this in. And now, I will put my label on and I get these free from delivered to my door from USPS to go ahead and put the priority sticker on. And then look at this. I got, had a logo made and so it has my love to shop 242. I just ha had someone on Fiverr. I asked them to make a cartoon caricature and gave them my YouTube channel. And so they came up with a little me and then I hand wrote on there, thank you for shopping. And so I will put that on there. And then there we go, ready to go. Then I put all of my USPS packages that are going out for the day outside in a plastic container. I put the lid on and I have a ring camera. So when the mailman comes, I will be able to see him or her drive up, pick up my packages and leave. So even if I'm not home, I will know when my packages have been picked up. I have a ring doorbell on my front door also, but um, one of the carriers prefers that I put my packages on the side of the house. So I put them there and have a camera and I highly recommend that. It gives me such peace of mind that I can see my packages picked up each day. The remaining items that we're going to ship today are going to go FedEx and UPS. Now let's ship an item that I sold on Facebook Marketplace. I sold these beautiful champagne glasses and they are going to go UPS. The shipping on Facebook Marketplace is just like Poshmark. You get an email and it has an attachment. You open the email and it gives a little bit of information about your order. It tells you on Facebook to ship within five days, which I feel like that is too long. I like to try to ship within 24 hours or the next business day of selling an item. Then you just go down to the bottom of the email and you will see your shipping label. You print it out and it is that easy. So now we will package the item. Okay, I sold these champagne flutes on Facebook Marketplace. And so I already have them kind of pre-packaged, but I wanted to show you how I did it. So I have each one wrapped. I took one piece of smaller bubble wrap and I just rolled it because I wanted to have it as solid as possible. Then I took another piece and I wrapped it around and then I put it inside 
So I will do that with these. And then luckily, it has the little pieces inside and then I'll put more bubble on top and then I will double box it also. And I have this that my mom gave me that came in some kind of packaging. I have this and then I have a couple different boxes that I'm going to cut down. I did not pre-package this one because I knew I was sending it UPS and all I would have to do is have it under 10 pounds. And so I thought, I, I know I have the packaging and I know it'll be under 10 pounds. So I didn't worry about pre-packaging it since I knew I had everything. And I'm going to kind of try to protect these edges a little bit more. And then when I take it and drop it off at UPS, I will video. All you do is walk it up to the counter and give it to them. And they scan it in. Okay, now, so that's one layer of protection. So I put this on. Let's see, that might be a little too big. I don't want to damage the box. So I'm going to cut this. And this does take quite a bit longer than just a shirt, so you want to make sure that you make enough money on it, and I did. I will pop up what it sold for. It was $39 plus shipping. I thought I could sell it for $39.99 on eBay, so $39 on Facebook Marketplace is even better because the fees are lower, so I actually did better than I even anticipated since it sold on Facebook Marketplace. Next, I am just adding several layers of bubble wrap around the box. I feel like if you can put an inch to two inches of filling in between the two boxes, that gives it an ideal amount of protection. Okay, so look at this. I took, this is so nice and solid. I took this and put it all around the edges. I don't even know what this came from, but my mom gave it to me. But ask people to say packing for you because it is great to be able to have things like this. And, oh, that's perfect. And then I'll have a little room to stuff it full of filler so it doesn't move around. Oh, I know what I'm going to do. Okay, so that slid in there just perfectly. Then I just took that top part and taped it on. That way it had protection on every end, but it wasn't oversized. So now I have box one inside of box two, and I'm going to fill in all that space so that there's no movement. I taped it closed, put the label on it, drove to UPS, and all I have to do is hand it to them. They will weigh it, scan it, and give me a receipt. Bye-bye. Next, let's ship an item that sold on Macari and it went FedEx Smart Post. I've only had one item from this series sell on Macari, so I've already shared some of this information if you saw my what sold video. So I apologize if some of it you have seen more than once, but there is some new information also. I might have only sold one thing from this series on Macari, but it was a great one. It was the Ted Baker dress. When you sell something on Macari, you will get an email. It does not have an attachment like on Poshmark or Facebook Marketplace. So you open the email and it tells you, congratulations, you made a sell. Then if you go down further in the email, you will see an orange box that says print shipping label. 
So I just print my shipping label and I'm ready to package my dress and take it to FedEx. I sold, sold the Ted Baker dress and I'm going to ship it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it on this craft paper and then I will put it in a poly meller also so that it's weather protected. Normally when I package clothing, I put them in a clear plastic bag to give them protection from the weather and just to stay looking really nice. However, this dress was too big and there was no way it would fit in one of them. So I just laid a couple pieces of craft paper down and wrapped it with that to keep it nice. And that is one layer of protection. And then my next layer is going to be the poly bag that you can see in the background, the black and white oversized one. And I'm actually going to use two of them to give it really good protection since it was a pretty high priced item. And I tape it up so that it comes looking nice. I put a thank you sticker on it. This dress weighed over one pound, one package. So the least expensive shipping option was FedEx Smart Post. It was only $7.99 for the buyer. So I offered that for shipping. And when I have FedEx Smart Post, I just take my item to Walgreens. If you walk into the store, it's normally towards the back of the store or off to the side, you'll see the photo counter. You just hand your package to them and they will scan the barcode and ask you for your phone number. Then they put it in and usually before I have even walked a few steps away from the counter, I will receive a text saying that the item has been received and it will give the tracking number where you can track it. So it is really easy. I will take it to Walgreens normally or a FedEx location. They say do not drop it off at USPS. It has to start at FedEx or Walgreens. So that is everything that I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video and wouldn't mind giving me a thumbs up, I would appreciate it so much. And if you're not subscribed and would like to join me again, I would love to have you back. Just hit the subscribe button down below and hit the notification bell so that you will know when I release new videos. Thank you so much for watching and everybody have a great day. Bye.